Guys, what's going on? This is Dr. Matt Winning at winningstrength.com. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about supplementation, where I get mine from, and what I think most people need as far as supplements go for various reasons. So let's get to it. Well, first of all, we need to understand that supplements in the U.S. alone is um, equivalent to a $159 billion industry that employs over 600,000 people. So it's a large industry with a lot of profits and a lot of money coming in for that reason. Expected growth from now, which is 20, almost 2025, to 2030 is expected to be around 5.7%. We have to ask ourselves, why does the supplement company or why are the supplement companies expected to grow almost 6% in the next five years? Well, it's pretty simple. One, we have an aging population. So now in our timeline, we have probably the oldest population that we've seen in a long time, possibly ever. <clears throat> we don't have as many people reproducing. The baby boomers were probably the most abundant population that we have seen in the United States. And now they're all in their 60s, 70s, and 80s plus. And so what's happening is that with an aging population, they're starting to look for more health hacks, right? More stuff to take to keep them youthful, keep them young, keep inflammation away, which we'll talk a little bit about today. Um, keep their blood work looking better, which leads us into the next thing that I think is a huge issue of why we're seeing so, so much supplementation nowadays. The other thing is it's massive deficiencies in many individuals because um, we're seeing blood work. So, you know, 25, 30 years ago, blood work wasn't called upon nearly as often. Now we have places like Merrick Health, Titan um, Health, places like that where we can actually email or um, contact via, you know, social media or, or email these companies. They can send us a form. We can sign it. We can go to our normal lab corp once the doctor prescribes the the blood draw and go to a lab corp and actually get blood work done. This is pretty new because even when I was starting my professional lifting career around 2004 out of the amateur ranks, there weren't as many people going and get blood work like just normal everyday things. Um, now I get my blood work done every three to six months. And I'm telling you that the amount of information that you find in blood work is very interesting and very usable if you know what to do. Keep in mind that if, you know, learning how to understand blood work is much of an art form as anything else. So if you need contact us, we can look at your blood work. I can give you some examples of things that I've used with clients and myself to fix things. Um, but again, there are people that that's all they do. Somebody that comes to mind is a good friend, Dr. Jackson. Dr. Dwayne Jackson was the one that originally found some of my blood work to be incorrect, and we're working on getting it corrected now. But the point is, is that blood work can be one of those huge factors in making sure that you're doing the right things at the right time with your supplementation. So I want to go over some supplements that I think most people probably are deficient in. This has to do with some research, um, seeing blood work over the last 20 years with my fire departments and professional athletes and my clients. Um, a lot of them share, share some decent similarities that I want to go over today. But before we do that, I want to talk about where we should get our supplementation. And what you find is as you start digging through information in the United States about supplements, it's a very tricky and wishy-washy situation. The FDA really doesn't regulate supplementation like they probably should. And so with that being said, the U.S. market from around 1988 or so was taken off of the FDA's um, jurisdiction and basically became a cowboy system. So what we find is you see a lot of these companies that have these you know, proprietary blends and um, stuff that gets taken off the market because people get sick or they might have you know, heart palpitations or they get heart attacks or strokes. And the reason that happens is because the FDA doesn't require a lot of times supplementation to be pre-tested before anything is put out on the market and therefore there can be dangerous stuff in it. Um, we all have heard the old sayings of the old Jack 3D having amphetamines in it. I never was a huge fan of taking any supplementation for pre-workouts or anything, but I've heard some pretty crazy stories about some of that shit. But now, as we get into this, I wanna talk about why 
we utilize ATP labs at Winning Strength, and I've been using ATP labs for roughly the last 10 years. Um, ATP labs is made in Canada. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of problems with Canada. Canada has a terrible economy. Canada has pretty terrible leadership. But the one thing that Canada has on the United States is that they regulate their supplementation like drugs. So if a supplement is made in Canada, which there are very few companies that actually do, they're heavily regulated just like a drug. And so when I got introduced to ATP Labs through through Charles Poliquin, um, it was a real eye-opener on the fact of the stringent qualities that they use, the ingredients that they use, um, the BPA-free plastics that they use to package everything. Everything is thought out of. And that's a huge factor for not only myself, but the clients. So that's why we've used ATP Labs for so long. That's why we have ATP Labs discount codes on Patreon at various levels, up to 25% off year round. So let's get into what top deficiencies are probably common in both you and some of the people that you know. The first one that I think is a huge factor that I want to go over is magnesium. Um, Usually about one out of every four people, if you look at most data, people are deficient in magnesium. Okay. Now, the big thing about deficiencies in magnesium is why do we have deficiencies? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, We use chemical fertilizers, right? So we have industrial farming that uses chemical fertilizers and it can strip the soil of its natural nutrients and this includes uh, magnesium. The next thing is we use potassium-based fertilizers um, and these um, are such as murate of potash and potassium sulfates are commonly used in fertilizers for plants. However, this this potassium can reduce the amount of magnesium um, and then the calcium in the soil. Um, Soil pH has also changed rapidly due to our rain quality and uh, the other fertilizers that we use. Um, Soil pH decreases in soil with pH below 6.5 and um, decreases significantly below 5.5. So um, magnesium is very dependent in the soil based on the pH of the soil. And so decreasing significantly below 5.5 can be a huge factor depending on where your plants are being grown or if that soil has been utilized for many, many years. Um, So crops are grown in soil that's depleted of magnesium. The plant actually can't absorb the magnesium. Um, So there's a couple of big things that I think we need to get out of this information. One is that there are other studies that I've seen that show that 50 to 65% of the population is deficient in magnesium. So Magnesium deficiency symptoms are fatigue, muscle cramps and spasms, tremors, nausea. Um, We can have headaches, confusion, irregular heartbeat, and sometimes in severe cases, we can see seizures. Um, The big thing is, is that this is caused by um, diuretics, which is huge in bodybuilding and fitness type stuff. Um, We can see this in kidney disease. We can see this in alcohol abuse. And there's other medications, like especially antibiotics, can reduce your magnesium in your blood. And so with that being said, and we know that the soils and some of the plants that we eat don't have high levels of magnesium in them anymore or or very rarely, the best thing we can do is do supplementation. So ATP Labs makes what I like to use the best of is magnesium, which is called Center Mag. Center Mag is actually magnesium glycinate. Now magnesium glycinate, um, is a huge factor because magnesium glycinate tends to relax the muscles, lowers blood pressure. Um, We have muscle function with it. So muscle and nerve function, blood sugar regulation, which is just huge for diabetics, um, heart health, and you also have immune system function. These are all related to magnesium. Um, And for us, Adults should usually consume about around 500 milligrams um, for men and around 310 milligrams for women. But I find that for most people, if they're deficient, they're going to need upwards of around 750 to 1,000 milligrams of magnesium from what I've seen in blood work for it to come back to normal things. Um, there are some stuff that you can eat that will help raise magnesium, like cashews, whole grains, and green leafy vegetables. But we know that with the... Um, 
with the problem with the soil, that's going to start working on the nuts, the whole grains, and the green leafy vegetables, right? Um, so we have to be very, very careful with that. Um, but the nice thing is, is that magnesium is very difficult to overdose on. So for a lot of times, if people come to me with blood work and they have a magnesium deficiency, I put them on three to five tabs of magnesium, depending on body weight. And then what we see is their magnesium levels come up, their blood sugar gets better, their muscles relax more in between training bouts, and they recover faster. So again, magnesium is a huge factor, and getting it from ATP Labs is a big deal. Another big factor and supplement that we need to consider in our diet is omega fish oils. Now, ATP Labs has Omega Pure, which is probably the highest grade fish oil I've ever seen. And we're going to get to a couple of reasons why I like to use ATP Labs for their fish oil, not only because of their purity, but for some other reasons as well. But we usually derive them, good companies derive this from sardines that are heavily filtered. So like ATP, we don't get the burps, we don't get the fishy breath, we don't get any of that because it's highly filtered. Um, but what does it improve? Well, we know that it can reduce heart disease. There's some other factors and, and other papers out there that say otherwise, but I would tend to say that the ones that have had issues have been not using pure grade fish oil. The other thing we know is that fish oil can reduce blood pressure, which is a common problem in a lot of today's society, as well as reducing triglycerides and cholesterol and improving arthritic factors such as inflammation. Great fish oils like ATP Labs, which a lot of people don't know, include vitamin E. When you take high levels of fish oil over omega-3, what you can find is that that will reduce vitamin E levels in your body. So having a vitamin E added into the fish oil is a huge component and one that ATP Labs has already figured out for you. The funny thing about Omega Pure is, and I wasn't a huge fish oil fan until my early 30s, Talking with Charles Poliquin and learning about the BioPrint, which is a 14-site um, skinfold test that we use at the gym. So if you want to know how much fish oil you should take, we should sign you up for an assessment and do this and we can say. But I remember him telling us that you want to use um, 1,000 milligrams of fish oil per 1% body fat, which I think is a little bit on the extreme side. But he had been using it with a lot of top athletes for a lot of years and saw some pretty impressive results with not only muscle mass, but reduced body fat and better metabolisms. We're also starting to see this in some papers with utilizing omega-3 fish oils in obese patients and seeing a reduction in inflammation as well. So maybe Charles was onto something with the omega-3 fatty acids. But again, Omega Pure is probably my go-to for the capsules because it's gonna help bypass the stomach and you're gonna get better absorption. They also make it in a liquid, which is called omega-3 triglycerides. But the point is, is that we don't eat as much fish as we did probably a thousand years ago because most people lived coastal a thousand years ago and fish was a huge proponent of our diet, which is also, if you look at some of the um, research and um, just projection on how we actually produced or evolved a higher level brain was the fact that we were taking in so many omega-3 fish oils. Not that all of that can be proven, but I've heard it before and it seems pretty interesting to me. The next supplement we need to talk about is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is a huge factor in a lot of people. One, especially in the Midwest mm. or places where there's not a lot of sunlight. So for instance, here in Ohio, we haven't had a lot of sunlight in the last two months because we're in our winter months and it tends to be cloudy, rainy, or even snowy. And a lot of times, naturally, we get vitamin D absorption through the sunlight. And so with the advent of sunscreens and, you know, protective clothes, and we're thinking that the sunlight, which to a certain extent can be dangerous, um, vitamin D levels have been constantly falling in the population. Um, but what does vitamin D actually do? Well, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, and it helps with the absorption of calcium and phosphorus. Some studies have even seen an increase in testosterone with vitamin D, which has shown um, an increase in power production, a reduction in body fat, and an increase in muscle growth, as well as an enhanced immune system. So we can see that vitamin D is very important, especially if we're trying to naturally get as strong or as big or as powerful as we possibly can, because there's a lot of people that have vitamin D deficiencies. For most of us, we need about 4,000 IU of vitamin D per day. And so the big thing that I think you'll see a lot of the top companies do 
is they will combine vitamin K with vitamin D. Now this makes it really important because the vitamin K helps the transportation of calcium to teeth and bone and lets the vitamin D kind of do its thing without having it floating around in the blood vessels and causing possible plaque buildup. So ATP Labs makes vitamin D3 plus K2 um, and you wanna make sure that you're testing your blood work to see if you need this supplement because having too high a dosages of vitamin D can be toxic. So what we have to remember is most all fat soluble vitamins can have a toxic property to them if they're too high. So balancing out what type of supplementation you need, again, is very important for blood work to be done so we can see exactly what you need and so you're not wasting money, but also maybe causing more problems down the road.